Um, we're doing some really nice Swiss chard um, and red cabbage, a really nice braised recipe. Very, very simple uh, and easy to prepare. Swiss chard is delicious. This is one of my favorite greens to cook. You know, I know kale was very popular um, and it kind of pushed Swiss chard out of, out of the spotlight. Um, this is gonna be very, very quick, easy to do. We're gonna start off with, with the greens. And what I have is a, a large pan. Um, the greens cook more than you think um, it's going to turn into because it, it's once you start cooking the greens, especially Swiss chard, a lot of that moisture starts jumping out of it and it turns into nothing. So uh, that's why I even say I hate when that happens. When this is like three here. cups of Swiss chard. You know, even go four or five if you want a little bit extra. Uh, so we have our Swiss chard, we have our cabbage, um, and some garlic. Very, very simple. The garlic, I just leave whole. I just kind of give it a little bit of a crush. And that crushing, we've done some garlic uh, classes before with one of our garlic farmers from the community, Ron Reed. And one of the tips we love about garlic is even if you're leaving it whole like that, give it that crush, because by crushing, you're actually bringing some of those enzymes and those active ingredients together. And just letting it sit for just five minutes can actually increase the, the uh, cancer-fighting activity that some of these compounds might have. So what I've added was a little bit of grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil um, has a higher smoking point than your olive oil, so it can withstand a little bit of a hotter heat. I want a hotter heat with this because if it's too low, then it just gets really soggy. Um, when it's a higher heat, it, it makes the water inside evaporate very quickly. So it, it does wilt down, but it, it doesn't turn into like a mush or to, like it's too, too soft. Um, you want it a, yeah, a bit crisp. You yeah. don't want to over, overcook it. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem with greens is it's overcooked a lot till it's too soft. So a medium high heat, grapeseed oil, um, and I'm going to add oh, the garlic first. And you'll know when it's ready because you'll hear that What's sizzle. What's that? You're ready? Okay. You have to talk to your pan, just like a plant. So the Swiss chard and the cabbage, the purple cabbage is going to go in. So that's not going to take long at all. It's going to take about three, four minutes. And it's great as a side dish on its own. We're going to do a little bit of a chicken um, that you can add with it. And you can do this ahead of time. Uh, and what we're doing is we're going to make a little bit of a bread crumb with cauliflower. Um, Superfood of 2014. Yes, this is the trending food if people follow food trends. It's the new kale. It's the new kale. So that's it. That's all it takes for the greens. Um, I'm going to remove it from the heat. And then right at the end, I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice. And if I wanted to add something a little bit more flavorful, then that's when I would add like a good extra virgin <laughs> olive oil. It's right at the end, so just a little bit. That's it, done. Off to the side. If you want it finished at this point, remove it from the pan as well. Just remember the pan still has some residual heat. It'll continue to cook down a bit. But for us, that's, that's perfect because I want it to maybe cook down for another 30 seconds. So that's off to the side. Now we're going to do our breadcrumbs. So we have cauliflower in there. We have some pecans. Mm. Delicious. And we're going to pulse them. By the way, plug it in Plug first. in your food processor, step Very one. Very important. I don't want to turn the cauliflower into a mush, just until it's, it resembles a breadcrumb. OK, so you can kind nice. of see it on there, Except how for it's that kind chunk. of broken down. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a chunk <laughs> in there. Um, that's the lucky piece. Uh, so that's exactly what we want. And then we're going to add a couple more ingredients. So seasoning, any dried herbs, oregano, dried basil, dried mint, fantastic. We're using uh, zaitar. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, but it's one of my favorites. Zaitar. No, zaitar. Um, it's used uh, a, a lot in Israeli cooking, a lot of in Middle Eastern cooking. Um, it has a dried oregano, dried thyme sesame seeds, sumac, which is almost has like citrusy kind of flavor going on. Really nice, beautiful. But again, you can, use, you can use whatever you want in there. You can just buy it as an herb blend. And you're seeing more and more, you know, sumac and, and za'atar that you can buy ready-made. Or just, you know, use your favorite dried herbs right in there. Again, one of our favorite ingredients, yes. we're using the whole citrus fruit we're putting in our zest. Zest, 
not the lemon juice, just the zest. We don't want it to get soggy, even though it's going to have some moisture from the cauliflower. And I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of uh, chickpea flour. Any flour will work here. Again, this is just going to help with the binding. Chickpea flour is, is it doesn't have any gluten, so if you did want it uh, as a gluten-free breading, that would definitely work. And then just one pulse, two pulses at the end. That's it, done. So the breading's done. Move this out of the way. Uh, you can, again, this is a, a good breading for anything. You can do it with fish, chicken, wrong fridge. We're using um, chicken, chicken thighs. thighs. What I done had them just, I just uh, put a little bit of mustard and I had a little bit more zaytar and I rubbed it on top just to give it a, a little bit of uh, moisture so that the, the cauliflower would stick. And you can do that ahead of time. You can let it marinate. Uh, you don't even have to let it marinate. You can just do it right before you put it on. And I'm going to use the breading. And this isn't like regular breading. So you have to work with it a little bit. And essentially what I want to do is just kind of press it onto the chicken. And you can do this on both sides or just one side if you just want like that piece on top. Press it on and that's it. Done. That's going to go into the oven for about 20 minutes, 20, 20 to 25 minutes. Um, the chicken thighs... Uh, and it's, it's about 400 to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, so a little bit hotter. Um, we want to get some nice color on, on the cauliflower. Chicken thighs don't take that long to cook, but it's more of um, you want to cook, you want to get that nice crispy top with the cauliflower. So that's going to go in. And take it out. Set it away. Whoa. And so you have this really nice crispy golden brown on the outside. That looks great. And you're getting some extra fiber, of course, yeah. because you're using that chicken flour as well as the cauliflower. And less calories than you would if you were going for a traditional breadcrumb option. And that's it. And then we're going to plate. So the cabbage and the Swiss chard color is fantastic. It looks really good. As soon as you add the um, lemon juice to your cabbage, it'll turn that dark purple to almost like a, like a vibrant hot pink. Um, and that's because the, the acidic lemon juice, you're adding it to a more alkaline ingredient. So it's actually, it changes color. It's kind of cool. It has a little bit of a psych Science psychedelic experiment. look. Yes. <laughs> So the, the cabbage is going to go on top. Then we're going to get, I'm running out of tools. We're going to get our chicken. And you have the pecans. But that's it, really, really nice, colorful. Uh, and it's a different sort of breading. And you, again, you can use this with anything. That's it.